Love these lips. Love this airbrushed look. That's what we're doing today, guys. We are doing some cool splate, splate patter. I say that every time. Paint splatter. <laughs> splate patter. I'm just going to say that now. Splate patter. Okay. Paint splatter lips, as you can see, with what? Mascara. It's going to be great. And color correction, which is making my skin look so fine right now. I'm impressed with my skin. Like, wow, this is crazy. This is going to be great because, like, everybody, like, likes color correction, but, like, it's, it's hard. Like, everybody's like, what? And we will explain why while we do it. But first, let's prime. Lately, uh, instead of using the traditional primer, I have been uh, favoring skin bleaching cream with some sunscreen because... I'm just tired of my skin getting darker. I don't have anything against dark skin. I just prefer being pale because that's my style. So, I'm put on some skin bleaching cream first. Okay. And then after the skin bleaching cream, I'm going to let it set in a little bit. So I'm going to take a little coffee break. And then you put on the sunscreen, let it set in a little bit again, and then you just go on like you just put on primer. So, break. Okay. Now I'm putting on sunscreen. So I use some ultra sheer dry touch sunscreen so that, like, it's also a low SPF because... Beyond like SPF 100, it's it's all the same really. So I'm using SPF 70. So sunscreen takes quite a bit of time to dry. So I'm going to let it dry off camera because I can't film for like five minutes of me doing nothing. Like so boring. <laughs> so peace out. What I decided for this color correcting is um, to use the worst eyeshadows in my entire makeup collection. They're, they're so bad. But everything that's bad about them is what makes color correcting good. It's very thin. There's It's low pigment, so it's just a sheer over. So it just, if you know why color correcting works... It just filters the airwaves correctly, not the airwaves, <laughs> the light, the light rays correctly, and um, basically, it's just a sheer over the color that you don't want, so that they cancel each other, so it just comes across as skin. Okay, so. I could not find a really bad green, so for the redness correction on my face, we're going to use a, a good eyeshadow, but like I don't know where my uh, bad green eyeshadow went, but I don't miss it because it's just really bad eyeshadow. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to use a large brush, which is kind of weird, but you'll understand in a second. It's a duo fiber brush. It's got all the little ridges and stuff, which will be great for having that sheer look with the more highly pigmented one. So I'm gonna like kind of squeeze it a little bit so I can get more onto the brush and just go in and tap, 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 tap into the little green. And now I'm gonna like squeeze it out a little bit, make sure it's not too pigmented, make sure there aren't any other of the eyeshadows on there. And then I'm going to put it on my red spot. As you can see, there's like less green and more just red gone. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that later. <laughs> Oh, 
and uh, why you should probably do DIY uh, with eyeshadow over with bad eyeshadow over um, using like a color correction palette is a color correction palette nine times out of ten it's not the right shades for you like everybody's skin is different and their skin tones are going to need a different shade of green purple or yellow to color dance it not everybody needs the same shade but that's what they want people to think but it's not true don't believe those communists i don't know those conspiracists or however you say that conspirators conspirators don't believe those conspirators next oh i dropped it i'm a little bit of a close sometimes when it comes to brushes i don't know why like I'm pretty good with everything else, but with makeup brushes, it's just like, Phew. bye. <laughs> so, next we're going to do purple. Uh, this little ugly palette of mine, and it's got purple in it. Obviously, it's all purple, but. Oh, it won't open. It's so tiny, I can't open with the little knock. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So, I'm using this pigment because, like, I'm pale. If you were darker, this probably would be a good pigment, or if you like a shiny face, that one wouldn't hurt to use, but I don't even, yeah, fake eyeshadows. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to go right in with the purple because, like I said, it's not as highly pigmented, so you don't have to be careful about all the application and stuff, and I just realized I need a mirror. Where's this mirror? Can I focus on this one? Okay. So to get rid of yellow tones, I normally go like pretty much everywhere I contour and then a little bit more places because I don't like yellow tones in anything because I ain't no Oompa Loompa. And plus uh, purple just makes you look paler and have that more gothic um, tinge to your makeup. See how like it hardly, you can hardly see it. It's the pigment is perfect because it sucks his eyeshadow so much. It's perfect for this. <laughs> it's great. I realized all of this stuff last night, so I was like, this has gotta be a DIY that I do. I'm going to use a smaller brush because we're getting under the eye and if it's a little highly pigmented it'll be okay because I put eyeshadow underneath there anyway so it'll just blend right in with all those little colors. Color correction on fleek guys. Now we're going to move on to foundation and see how the uh, colors settle underneath the foundation. My chair is spinning. Okay, how the colors settle underneath the foundation and how great it's gonna be. It's gonna be great. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of foundation. So, pigment underneath the foundation is. Mm, as far as the mirror behind me says, it's not pigmented. I'm looking at this, and my under eyes look green. Maybe it was a bad idea to put that right there. Wow, that's really weird. My under eyes look green. <laughs> I don't know how that happened because that was yellow. I don't know how that happened guys, weird stuff, I don't know. I kinda need the smaller end of things. Yeah, now it looks better. Yeah.
Okay. Setting powder time, guys. This is going to be great. Oh, where's my thing? Found it. I can't open it. There it goes. I struggle with opening things. I kind of pat it on instead of um, brush because I've noticed that a lot of brushes, if you brush right over your foundation, if it's not a really, really loose um, fallout powder, it's going to streak your uh, um, the color correction totally worked. It is definitely helping with my little red spots that like to stick out through my foundation. Um, yeah, and even though that green was too highly pigmented, it's not, it's not there anymore. It, it's working. Now I'm going to do some highlight. Oh, and by the way, the setting powder I use is sparkly, but it's not like mega sparkly, so... Highlighting is still an essential. Hey, Snowlio, what's up? Snowlio's underneath my chair. You want to say hi to the camera, Snowlio? Come on. Oh, hi. I'm Snow Leo. Are you okay, Snow Leo? He lost his best friend, guys. Sam, we can't find him anywhere. I'm so upset, but like, oh, I can't. And this was Snow Leo's best friend because they came in the same from the same house, so they knew each other best. And I think he's looking for him because he's been wandering around the house, like looking everywhere, you know. I don't know what happened to him, guys. We even looked outside. He's not underneath the house. I mean, he was old. <laughs> Maybe he went into the woods and died. I don't know. <laughs> but that's really cryptic to say. <laughs> Maybe he decided he wants to be an outside cat. That happened on one of our cats a long time ago. When I was, like, still a little kid, we had this cat, um, Sweet Pea or something. And one day she just went missing. And... No, no, it wasn't Sweet Pea. It was a different cat. But anyways, one day they just went missing and uh, we ended up seeing her a lot, like, down the road in the woods. Like, she'd just, like, randomly come out and we'd be driving by for whatever reason and, like, we'd see her and, like, she's just living in the woods, living off of, like, nature and stuff. So I guess some cats just prefer that life. Maybe there's a clan of cats in the woods in my neighborhood that I don't know about. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Sam went to join them as an elder. That would be cute. My brush is... Whoops. <laughs> I was just going to show y'all guys one more hack. So... Um, if you've ever seen the splatter paint look, like, the lips are, like, splattered paint, um, I actually found a wonderful hack for that, starting with mascara. Now, if your lips aren't properly moisturized, this could hurt your lips, so don't do it if your lips are, like, chapped and you're not a hydrated person, because that would be really bad for your lips, like, it'd probably make them bleed. But if you if you got nice and hydrated lips like me most of the time, unless the weather changes suddenly, which it does a lot in Texas, and it decides to destroy me. Okay, so step one is you basically just go in and you just put splatters, but it's really easier, really easier. I hate my life. Okay, <laughs> it's really easy to apply with um, mascara. Here goes. I'm gonna start like right off center and then I'm just gonna go on the top because that's where the mascara likes to stay. Put a little dot of it and then use the streaky part to get that messy paint splatter look. See that? Yes, it is bomb. 
And then you just keep going until you got some black splate pa black point powders. <laughs> black black splatter paint. <laughs> going to fill in one half of the spaces that are left over. It looks paint splatter to me. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, I like it. So, I'm also going to put this on my eyes just because I like mascara. And this is actually a really good mascara. is looking so good guys I love it uh, like my skin just looks perfectly airbrushed today I'm in love with color correction now it's so great ah so wonderful okay bye guys hope I see y'all later